it is pouring as you saw. I am about to make some yogurt bowls. I don't know if that's my Jackson, but I'm sure he won't complain. Do you really have to go out again? Or you want your breakfast? Do you want your kibbles? That you really just, it's pouring, dude, and you already took a poo. Hurry up. Anyway, I have to be at the elementary school at 8.30. I don't know if Jax wants a ride to school, but they don't open his doors until 8.30. So, he'd either have to go super early and be outside in the rain or just walk with his friend with an umbrella like he has. So, I'll have to see what he prefers. I could take him and then head straight to the school, but I would want to drop him off at 8.20. It's really early. The school starts so at like 50, 8.50 or something. Anyway, I'm gonna make this. Good morning.
Hello, my friends. I don't have a lot filmed during the day today. I was working on illustrations. I really need to get my clip art procedure down. So I was exporting what I have redrawn. I drew all these fall clip art. I'm trying to do all the seasons, but it turned out they were too small and I'm redrawing them larger as individual things instead of a whole bunch on one page. And so I was taking what I had done and transferring over to Photoshop, cleaning them up a little bit because they don't transfer perfect and saving them out to the files I would need for Etsy and then doing new drawings. I was so tired. I was like falling asleep drawing at one point. I'm like, I need to stop because I'm gonna screw this up. But anyway, my day started with getting Sebastian to the bus in the rain and then it was pouring when Jax was supposed to walk and I couldn't drive him because I needed to be at the elementary school at 8.30. 8.30 is when they unlock the doors at the middle school. His school starts at 8.48 I believe. So if I were to drive him I'd have to just leave him there at like 8.20 out in the rain. <laughs> So ultimately he decided he would just try to walk to his friend's house and see if he wanted to walk together with umbrellas. And I was like, okay, I sent him off with an umbrella and told him to message me if he meets up with his friend. His friend does not have a communication device, so they can't like text or anything. But he texted me while I was going to the bathroom and brushing my hair for my meeting. Just a minute later that James is, or my friend's mom or something is driving him. Do you want, can I have a ride too? Something like that. I was like, yes, <laughs> yes, I don't want you to walk in the rain. Cause it was pouring, pouring. It was just drizzling off and on on the way home, but yeah, pouring. So that was good. And he also got out of the house pretty late because he was waiting to see if his friend would come over. So that worked. But I got out the door and drove to the elementary school again, second day in a row. When I was checking in, the same security guard that's always there is like, volunteer? <laughs> I'm like, no, actually this time I have a meeting because they have to write what you're doing on your little badge. And yeah, they, they called for the dean. The dean is who was in charge of the meeting, I guess. And they brought me to a room and his teacher came in. So I guess somebody was watching her class, <laughs> Sebastian's class for half an hour. And a speech therapist came in and yeah, we went around the table, introduced ourselves and basically they explained the process and they went over what the issue is in Sebastian's speech. And basically this is the start of an IEP, an individual education plan. I think something along those lines. I might have the tenses and stuff on. But individual education plan is just if you need to do things differently or have accommodations or have extra help. And this is what it is. He does get extra help with reading, but that's just called an intervention and it's just a small reading group and it's very common the beginning of first grade to do that, even in later grades, if you're just not on benchmarks. But yeah, so basically you identify a problem. His speech is the problem. I've always had to translate for him when he's talking. People don't understand him. Even for Danny, sometimes I'm translating. But now that he's away from me and he's at school, his friends can't understand him. Sometimes the teachers can't understand him. The teacher says sometimes he's trying to tell her something and if he has to repeat it a couple times, he just says, you know what, never mind. And it breaks her heart because she doesn't want to see him shut down. I brought up that now that he's starting to sound things out, he's writing like he speaks and he speaks incorrectly. So those are ways that his speech is affecting his education and basically to start 
an IEP process, you have to identify a problem that's affecting the education. So, we were in agreement to start it. That was back when I got a phone call from the teacher about both the reading intervention and starting the speech process. So after she had done that call, apparently they had met, probably recently, they met with Sebastian, the speech therapist, met with him because he's new to the school. He's only been there a couple months. Wasn't there last year, so they don't really have a big picture of what he's like and what his problem is like and what his speech is like. So they did a little mini evaluation so that they could even recommend we start the process and the speech therapist absolutely does. Basically she evaluates like expressiveness and articulation I think were the main things. She, she said he's completely fine with expressing himself but the articulation is just all over the place. She started with the S blends and says that he breathes out through his nose to make them like like that, which is crazy. It's making me snotty just trying that. I haven't taken my allergy medicine yet. But that was the one that I was like, oh, really? Because <laughs> all the others I know. At dinner, I was talking about it with Yvonne. He's here for the weekend. And I was like, hey, Sebastian, say the silly slug snoozes sloppily or something. I gave him just like some S words to do. And, and we all were like listening and we were <laughs> while he was saying it, like I can't even do it. But I'm like, oh yeah, 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 we hear that. So yeah, she mentioned that TH just always becomes D and or F, like I think. And that, let's go, I think that is really, willy, not on our good. And I would think he, he kind of says a T at the end of good. So she was going over a lot of the letters. I think the biggest one is the S's because she said she, has to, she would have to train him out of that, which is, I don't know how hard that is. She's the expert. But yeah, basically with the evaluation, she felt that we should proceed. The teacher felt we should proceed and I felt we should proceed. So we were on agreement, which is something you have to come to this whole process through the Virginia Department of Education. So they said, all right, we have a 55 day process and we have already set your date for your IEP meeting, it's February 2nd. It's November. Uh, but in that time, they will do all the steps they need to do. Some of those steps are the formal evaluations, there's classroom observance, there is, you have to create a metric for, no, first they set a goal, an achievable goal over the course of a year, because the IP lasts a year. So there needs to be an end goal and it needs to be measurable. And then they have to create like the, the ways they can track the progress. You can't just say, oh, he sounds a little bit better. That they need to like, the speech therapist is probably gonna have to do a lot of this, like getting this as planned and this and this and this. I'm sure she has an order that she needs to do it in. So they have to do all that. So this is why it's like 55 days. And yeah, all of these people need to put their input in and they will need to send that off to the IEP committee. I forget what they, she said it is. She is gonna send me all her notes, she being the dean, and I don't have those yet because it was Friday and they had a big assembly. But yeah, the IEP people will look at that and decide their, whether they recommend the IEP or not. And then we'll have the meeting. I think there's different things that we have to sign digitally, she kept emphasizing that, that if I had any problems signing digitally, she can 
print it out and send it home with Sebastian and stuff like that. I was like, that's, I'm not concerned with that. <laughs> it's fine, we'll figure that out. Right but yeah, so I guess when it comes down to it, the meeting, I think we just have to really agree on all of those parts, on the, on the goals, on the suggested therapy, on how they were going to track their progress. Everything has to be in complete agreement where they have to revise. So hopefully it's all straightforward. I mean, it's just, I asked them what they were would expect to happen if they did go forward with an IEP and the speech therapist was like, I would probably be pulling them out regularly for speech therapy for like half an hour a day. And the teacher said, yeah, we would try to recommend a time that's the least disruptive to a education so and that's where we are i was like okay cool they, they just need my agreement to move on with the process because they all recommended it but nothing happens without the parents consent i am thinking now that probably i will have something to sign to start the formal process so probably next week i'm going to be getting something to sign so they can do the observation and the evaluations so yeah that's where we are Certainly, oh, I need to plug this in. I certainly never expected to. Excuse you. I'm gonna put you down. I have a child that needs an IEP, but I'm not ashamed of that at all. I want him to get the best out of life and be the best he can be. And if we're gonna be in the public system, I'm going to use whatever resources I can. Oh, it just started raining again. I'm sure all you can hear is this ceiling fan, but I'm saying. It's raining out there. Yeah, so that is that. I did that from about 8.30 to 8.50. I was back in my car, five minute drive home. Made myself a second breakfast. I didn't want to eat at 7.30, but for the second day in the row, I made myself eat something at 7.30 because I can't function super well with nothing in me. I, if I'm just around the house, I'm walking the dog, doing work and chores and computer stuff, I'm fine, but like doing that picture day or going to a stressful meeting, no. I don't need to be feeling like I'm gonna pass out. So yeah, I had that yogurt bowl. I can't eat a lot of yogurt, so it's mostly fruit, but it was enough to hold me. Then I made a big brunch. I was just hungrier today. Some days I'm hungrier. I think stressful days, <laughs> maybe. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe it's just because I was tired. And then, yeah, as I said, I was doing a lot of illustration, and I just was too tired to paint. I was really tired. <laughs> At one o'clock is when they had their assembly at the elementary school for Veterans Day. Danny was trying to tell me that anybody could go if they RSVP'd, but he was confusing that with the Veterans Dinner that they were doing at the middle school tonight. This was only for service members and their families and veterans. So all of the different grades at the school, learned different songs, patriotic songs, and I think they did presentations and stuff. They were supposed to live stream it for everybody else. They're like, the, the veterans and the military families can be there, but we're going to stream for everybody else. And of course, I was refreshing that stream while illustrating. It didn't work. It didn't work. I kept going for an hour refreshing it. Oh my god, I hope they're at least recording it. And they did, so what you saw, I saw a couple hours later when they got a video edited and uploaded. So I purposefully blurred it. Obviously. <laughs> Other kids. I mean it was so blurry you couldn't tell who was who. We could, well he could he kinda recognized some of his classmates, but we couldn't even find him in the crowd. But it was adorable. And yeah, then I got him from the bus stop. We got a little break in the rain. 
When Jax is walk home, it was sprinkling off and on, but he did get to walk home with a friend in the neighborhood, not his normal morning buddy, because he had to go off with his grandpa. So everybody made it home, and while Jax was walking home, Danny went out to pick up Yvonne. It must have been um, Yvonne's alarm. It's to our alarm to check his medical stuff. Anyway, yeah, Yvonne's gonna stay over because he and Danny are going to a party tomorrow night, I think. And Yvonne's car is kind of iffy, so instead of Dan having to go back and forth and get him and stuff, but if he wanted to come here and share the, the meat meal, as I call it, the steak meal that Danny was cooking, he was like, hey, just, just stay with us. I didn't even know this. I was just sitting down to have a snack and do some knitting. And he was like, yeah, so Yvonne's probably gonna stay tonight. I'm like, oh my gosh, I need to go move that dresser that's in the doorway of the guest room and move all of the bags and boxes of donations. So there's still stuff in here, but the dresser used to be right here in the doorway. This is so dark. So I moved it over there. There's so much construction stuff that Danny has put in here. So I tried to contain it. This is an old pack and play I need to donate. I don't know who will take it though. They're iffy about baby stuff, old blankets and stuff. I moved all the other donations down to the dining room so I need to call for a donation pickup. But yeah, that's what I did while Jax was walking home so he's got it sounds busy because it's great here. <laughs> it looks fine, right? <laughs> for Jax and I because we don't eat steak though Yvonne likes to share the tofu he enjoyed it last time so he took some tofu and that is my night I didn't have enough time to do anything but finish Jax's new Kirby hat so I need to get pictures of the hat I was making the pom pom and that's my night alright I'm gonna say goodnight <laughs> Oh my goodness, I just talked to Aero for 18 minutes. If you made it this far, you are a true friend. I appreciate you. And you get a cookie. Here's your cookie. Good night. Stay safe. Be kind. And don't forget, wash your hands.